What is up everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, and I'll actually be showing you guys a quick one minute clip of my trade today in ticker symbol SES. And I also want to talk to you all about a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching right now and looking to trade in the middle of October in 2019. So if you guys find value in this video, if you do enjoy the content here on the channel, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you do want to see further content about the stock market, investing and trading and join our Strive Smart Discord group chat and our Strive Smart Facebook group. All of those are linked down below. So without further ado, guys, let's just get right into it. Starting off here with SPX, ticker symbol SPX, the SMP 500. So there is about seven minutes minutes left there are seven minutes left here in the market and honestly today has been one of the most boring days in the market that I have ever seen probably not ever seen but in the recent you know time that I've been in the markets over these past couple of weeks right today was very boring you can see we're down about two dollars and thirty cents right now down about 0.07 percent and when you go to the one day one minute you'll be able to see how boring it really was look at this consolidation guys this is absolutely crazy right maybe there's not much traders out there today not much volume it is Columbus Day here um, you know in the United States so that could be a massive reason as to why we are seeing this but literally we gapped down a little bit 29.62 was the low for the day the high was probably 29.72 roughly so that's putting us in a 10 point window where we've literally been trading within over the past past seven eight hours now that the market has been open right and if we go back to that 184 hour chart you guys can see that we're trending in this wedge and we're also trending between 2950 and around 3020 which is the all-time high in terms of the range that we're trading in right now so an interesting thing in my opinion on the S&P here is what direction are we going to pick right are we going to break out of the resistance of this wedge which in my opinion if we do that will be very bullish we may be seeing all-time highs at that point right or are we going to get rejected are we going to end up breaking these moving average support levels and maybe even 2950 which if we do that's going to be very bearish we may be going down to test the support of this wedge and even the 2920 ish level of support um, as you guys can see which honestly would put us right on on that wedge again on that support so at this point guys it's very very funky where we are um, you know with the close right now it seems like we are going to close red keep an eye on these futures tomorrow keep an eye on these large caps hopefully as more volume comes into the market tomorrow we can end up picking a direction right and if we do see that big dump towards 2950 expect maybe a slight drawdown from there as that is a very critical break break again if we do break 29.50 and zooming in a bit to the 20 day one hour chart here you guys can see we are holding that 180 SMA support so watch that level for the break and if we do break that again we'll be shooting right to that 29.50 level in my opinion the Dow Jones right now down 23 points down about 0.09% here if we go to the one day one minute you can see very similar to the S&P no movement whatsoever right we got to a low at around 26,750. High of the day was around 26,870, putting us around in a 100, I guess you can say, 110 point window. And we were trading within that for the entirety of the day, pretty much. And if we zoom out to the 184 hour, you can see just like the SP, we're in this wedge where we did get rejected, honestly, by the resistance here. And it does seem like we're going to go down and test 26,6 right now, which is. Is a very critical level of support that if we did break that we may be going down to test 26.3 which would put us right on top 
of this trend line as a support, the support of this wedge, right? So just keep an eye really on which direction we're going to pick here as more volume kicks in, in my opinion, tomorrow, the rest of this week. That should be telling us, are we breaking out? Are we selling off? And then, of course, from there, we'll be able to plan out our trades accordingly in terms of individual stock picks and ETFs, right? So if we go to the NASDAQ right now, it's down about three points again guys no movement whatsoever it was so boring today in the markets which is why I did end up dipping my toes into this very very speculative risky play which was SES and again you'll see that here in a couple of minutes the live action but you can see here on NASDAQ on the NASDAQ we're at the resistance right now of this wedge right if we break that that will be very bullish we're also holding 7830 ish as a support that's a pretty good sign because that was an older resistance from back Back in the end of April towards the beginning of May, right? So the fact that we are holding that is good. I think if we dump here, that is going to be very bad for the NASDAQ, right? From there, we're going to be testing moving average support levels. We may be going down to 77.20. And of course, we may test the support of this little wedge that we are seeing. And if we break that, there could be a lot of blood in the waters after that, right? On the 20-day, one hour, you can see overall, we are looking a bit bullish on this chart time frame, right? Which is why it's important to look at a bunch of different time frames. And why am I saying that? It's because we're breaking out of the moving average resistances and holding them as supports. But then again, it's also good to look at larger time frames to make um, an analysis and judge call in my opinion because the smaller time frames can trick you right because you see this you're like okay this is very very bullish but then you zoom out a bit to the four hour again then you're like okay maybe it's not as bullish as I thought right again it's also it's just very important guys to just hop back and forth between these time frames so this one day one minute right here on the NQ you can see we were pretty much just trending in this little zone here for the whole day. Not much price action whatsoever. So overall here, guys, that is what the markets did today in a nutshell. Nothing crazy. If you missed the market today, really, you didn't miss anything, right? Today would have been a great day to just take off if you're trading, you know, SPY, maybe these overall markets in terms of ETFs and stuff like that. But I think a lot of action will be coming here over the next couple of days. So let's talk about the first of two trades that I made today, and that trade was in DGAS, guys. And we talked about natural gas, and there go the markets. They ended up closing slightly red, but we talked about natural gas in yesterday's video, and honestly, we've been talking about this a lot recently, and natural gas is it's, it's kind of like the hottest topic right now in terms of, I feel like, trading YouTubers in a sense. A lot of people are making videos on this. A lot of people are covering it. A lot of people have plans to make a lot of money on UGAS or make a lot of money on DGAS. So let's just break it down right here. So natural gas, this 50 SMA, it's acting as a resistance. There's no doubt about it, right? Over the past couple of weeks, as we've sold off from 270 all the way down to 220, it's very evident that it's been acting as a resistance, right? We also see 230 as a resistance right now. We also see 220 as a support. So we're in this 10 cent range right now on natural Natural gas and what I ended up doing this morning is I noticed how on the 20 day one hour we were seeing a bit of a resistance under this 180 SMA where over the previous couple of weeks the candles, the, uh, uh, the future here, natural gas, it's gotten rejected at these points. So I was thinking to myself, okay, if we get rejected here, this is going to be a very good degas play, right? If we pop out, if we break out, maybe even if we break out of 230, this could be very good for you guys. And obviously now that we see the chart, we can see that we ended up getting rejected and then we sold off all the way back down to the low 220s. I believe we got down, as you guys can see here, to about... 222 223 area and actually 
One other person in our Discord group chat called this out. It was on my watch list this morning as well. And this is when we were able to capitalize. And I think a bunch of other people in our group were able to capitalize on this move as well, right? And let me show you um, DGAS very quickly. Um, let me just zoom out a bit here very quickly. Let's pull up DGAS. And again, DGAS goes up whenever natural gas is going down, right? And if we zoom in on DGAS right here, we actually got quite a pullback from um, um, last Last Friday session because natural gas did run up to about 228 today. So we got that big pullback in degas opening up that margin of profit overall, right? On this four hour chart, you guys can see it. The big uh, the big pullback that opened up, let's see on a percentage basis, around 12, 13%, right? And this is when I started to see the resistance again under that moving average on natural gas. And then once we got that rejection, once we started to dump, that is when I started to scale in on my degas position. I believe it was right as we started to cross and break out here. Obviously, that's not the best entry point now that we look back on it, now that we do have, obviously, the rest of the day's session. But at this time, I wanted to see a break out of these moving averages and ultimately a bullish cross before getting in. We got that. Again, we got that natural gas dump. And this is when I started to trade it. I believe it was 140, 60, 147, or not, not 140. It was like 141 ish, 14120, somewhere in this area right here is when I started to build the position. It was honestly a very quick trade. We popped up sold off. And then as we started to rise again, that is where I ended up selling out. So it wasn't anything crazy. My SES trade that you'll guys, you, you'll see here in a minute was a lot bigger than this on a percentage basis. But then again, the SES trade was in my more speculative account while the DGAS trade was in my normal account. So overall, that is what I did in DGAS, about a 1.2% trade there. Nothing crazy. Now you'll see what I ended up doing doing with SES. So enjoy this very quick clip of today's session. Alrighty guys, so here we are in my Fidelity trading ticker symbol SES. This was my second trade of the day. I bought 26 shares when the stock was already up 338% on the day. We actually had a catalyst from this stock last week. They bought out an Australian energy company, thus pumping the stock up like crazy today. And this is actually a move I made in my smaller more speculative, I guess you can say, play account. So I only bought $600 of this stock. And my mentality this whole entire time when I was in it, and I was only in it for two minutes, was to get in and out, make that quick profit on the momentum to the upside, right? So I got in on this dip. And again, the whole time I was looking to exit. And you guys can see here, I placed the order. Once we pop up here to 2530, I placed the market order. I got filled at a around 25.15 with an entry at 23.06, roughly a 7% gain here with a profit of around 55 bucks in two minutes trading this. So that's the trade that I made. I hope you guys enjoyed this little live little update on what I did in terms of this in my speculative trading account. So now that we look at SES, guys, as about an hour and a half has passed since that trade, we can see it's dumped pretty aggressively now into the $19 range, which is why my mentality when I was in that trade was to get in and out as soon as possible because I have experience in the market. I know how things go, right? I know that something like this that's running up hundreds of percent, you can make a pretty good amount of money on it if you're quick, if you time it correctly. But if you stay in too long, you can get caught in a very bad trade if it dumps on you, right? Right? And I knew this. I knew this. I wanted to get in and out. So as I saw a dip, again, I started to scale in here. We started to pop up. And then this is where I ended up selling off. And guys, I timed it perfectly. As you guys can see, this thing dumped right after I sold out pretty much. And if I ended up holding, I'd be down in, in the 20s of percent at this point, which again is why it's so important to get in and out. And if you don't have a stop loss set, I 
I did not have a stop loss. I had a mental stop loss. Um, you know, this is even more tricky at that point. And for beginners out there, I wouldn't advise trying to chase these. You know, I personally did it because, again, like I mentioned earlier in the video, the markets today were very boring. This was very exciting in my eyes. So, hey, I took a little risky trade today, but a lot of people wouldn't have executed it as well as me if they were more beginners. And that's just me being completely honest. And they would be caught in a very bad spot right now, which again, it's why you have to ask yourself, are trading, is trading more speculative plays like this that are running up like crazy? Is this worth it for me? Is it, is, you know, my risk tolerance aligned with this? And if it's not, it's okay to not trade it, right? It's really just okay to not do trades like this. But for me again, today was one of those days that I was feeling a little bit risky. I wanted to dip my toes into this because some people in the group chat were talking about it. That kind of raised awareness in my eyes to it. So yeah, that's what I ended up doing. Let me know down below. And this is actually a lar larger time frame shot of it. But let me know down below what you guys thought of that and uh, your opinions. But you can see here from $1.50 all the way up to 26 bucks, guys, that is the definition of insanity, right? That is the definition of insanity and why it's so risky to get in because this could topple down just as quick as it came up. So that is the trading update for today, guys. And honestly, what I'm watching for the rest of this week, it's going to be a lot of the overall market. SPY SPX is what I'm watching a lot to see what direction that picks. I'm also watching, of course, you guys and DGAS, right? If we go back to natural gas, what I'm watching for the rest of this week is are we going to break out into the 230s if we do that's going to be a huge bullish sign right we may be filling up to 240 from there on a technical basis especially if we start to trend up from here and that could be a very very good opportunity to get into you guys which goes up whenever natural gas is going up right labd is another one that I'm watching. It's a biotech ETF. We actually talked about it in yesterday's video. It goes up whenever SPS IBI is going down, right? And right now we're seeing a lot of resistance under this 50 SMA. If we get a full on rejection here to the downside, we may be getting a nice pump in LABD and we could profit on it that way. But on the flip side, if SPS IBI breaks out here, the previous time it did break out of the 50 SMA, it filled up to the 180 SMA resistance, right? This could very well happen again. If it does break, we'll be watching it closely. Then we can trade LABU, which goes up whenever SPS IBI is going up and we will be able to capitalize on a nice move from there. And let me show you LABU very quickly for those of you guys that don't know. LABU, this is it, right? Right here. So gold, we'll take a look at gold very quickly. Gold's not really doing much at all right now, honestly. Slash GC, it's at 1496. The fact that we did end up closing above this support level, that is a good sign in my opinion, but still we're trending under moving averages. Um, you know, we're still seeing this bearish cross. We're still getting rejected by these moving averages. So I wouldn't be surprised if we did end up doing something like what is shown here by the arrow. If we do dump and go test 1460 and if that does end up happening gdx is going to dump and when gdx dumps guys inverse etf number one that i look at is jdst right jdst goes up whenever gdx and gold are selling off so this is one that's worth watching another one is procter and gamble this is more of a swing trade we're at a support right now at around 119 120 although we did break that 180 sma support which is a bit alarming this is still worth watching at this level in my opinion if we break this critical level of support that actually was an old resistance back in the uh, August month that's going to be very negative from there hey we may be going down to I'd say 116 115 maybe 117 this general area from there there could be some good potential short plays put options but then again Earnings are coming up here in eight days, and Procter & Gamble, they've been reporting pretty good earnings recently, so if they report another good quarter, this stock could be flying up back to the 125s in no time, right? Because this recovers, it seems like, after every pulldown, so... 
this could be another uh, time when it does recover after this pull down again, especially if those earnings are good. So Tesla, that's another one I'm watching. TSLA, we got a nice fill up here to 256 today, roughly to about 260. I think we got rejected uh, under that level a bit. But anyway, we got the nice bull move today. Now I want to see what it's going to do here. This could potentially be a very in interesting situation because earnings are coming up. So whatever those earnings earnings are, if they're good or bad, this could fluctuate the stock like crazy. Let's say they report good earnings. This can be flying out of this resistance at 260, which would be very bullish. Let's say the earnings are terrible, like we've seen before. Tesla had a quarter. I think it was either, la it was last quarter. Yep. Take a look at this quarter. No, it might've been the one before. Either way, they had a quarter where they lost an insane amount of money and the stock got crushed, right? That could happen as well at this point. So it's interesting to see what it's going going to do keep an eye on earnings i for sure am going to be watching tesla here so Overall, that's kind of what I'm watching here in the markets, guys. A lot of just the overall markets and what direction they're going to pick at this point because, again, we had a very boring day today in the markets. So that's it for this video. If you guys did enjoy it, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me, and let me know down below in the comment section what you thought about today's video, what's your thought on the markets, and Hey, let me know what stocks and ETFs you're watching as well if you do want to share that information. And all of the links are down below in the description, the Discord group chat, Facebook group, my Instagram, Twitter, all of that stuff is down below. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching as always. Peace out.